Why am I kneeling down in front of my RV toilet? Well, we got a couple of toilet issues. First of all, um, our waste ball is leaking. So in an RV toilet, it's really important to keep water inside the toilet to reduce the smell. Our toilet is not holding water. So um, we need to figure out why that's not holding water anymore. The second issue we have is when we depress the foot pedal that activates the ball and puts water into the toilet, it's leaking at the back of the toilet. So the first thing I had to do is figure out what toilet I have. Well, luckily, we actually still had the manual that came with our Grand Design RV, and we have an Aquamagic Style 2 toilet. So that was easy to figure out. If you don't have your manual, you're gonna have to go online and look at pictures to figure out which one you have. So once I figured out what toilet I had, I went online to Thetford, and I found this awesome uh, troubleshooting diagram which walked me through what's going on with the toilet and what, what kit we need to fix it. So, first of all, we need the Waste Ball Seal Kit 34120. That's this kit right here, which comes with the new seal to keep water inside our bowl. The next kit I need is 420049, which is the water valve kit, which we have right here. It has all the parts I need to make, fix the water valve. So in this video, I'm gonna go through how I replace the ball kit and get that sealed up nice and replace the water valve in the foot pedal. To get started, the first thing is to turn off the water to the RV at the spigot. Relieve pressure in the lines by flushing the toilet and then disconnect the water supply line and its connection to the base of the toilet. It's a good idea to put a couple of rags down to catch the water that's dripping out. Remove the plastic caps that cover the nuts that attach the base of the toilet to the floor. Use pliers, a wrench, or a ratchet to loosen the half-inch nuts. You should be able to use your fingers to spin the rest of the nut off. Repeat on the other side of the toilet. With both toilet closet flange nuts removed and the water line disconnected, you're ready to lift off the toilet. Carefully lift the toilet straight up over the nuts and place the toilet down. Pull out the T-shaped nuts coming out of the toilet flange and take some time to clean up the toilet flange and then block it with a plastic bag or something like that to block the smell while you're working on the toilet. I took the entire toilet outside and put it on a table to make it a lot easier to work on. Remove the upper and lower vacuum breaker hose clamps and remove the clear hose. This makes it easier to get at the bolts to separate the tank and allows for cleaning. Later on, I used a toothbrush to clean out the inside of this hose so it didn't look so nasty. With the vacuum breaker hose out of the way, it's a lot easier to gain access to the 3 8 inch bolts that hold the china bowl to the base. I use a 3 8 inch ratchet with a small handle to back out these bolts. Place the bolts aside, making sure you keep the metal washer and the plastic washer with each bolt. While holding down the base, rotate the china bolt counterclockwise to release the bowl from the four locking tabs. Now lift off the bowl from the base and set it down. Before we get started on fixing the leaking water valve, let's review the parts in the 42049 water valve kit. We have the water valve cartridge retainer, the water valve cartridge, the water inlet seal, the water inlet seal compression spring, the o-ring, and the closet flange seal. Remove the pedal. Holding the base from the front underside of the pedal, pull the pedal up and off with a quick motion. I had to use a screwdriver to apply some leverage to push the pedal off. It might have been easier to pull off with the bowl still attached. Pull up on the tab on the water valve cartridge retainer and rotate the retainer clockwise until it hits the spring. Grasp the retainer and pull the entire water valve assembly out. Pay attention to how this comes off so you will know how it goes back together easier later. Remove the water inlet seal compression spring from the opening where the water valve cartridge came out. You may need to use needle nose pliers or a screwdriver. Apply plumber's loop to the water inlet seal. Put the water inlet seal over a screwdriver shaft, then put the compression spring over the driver. Big side over the driver first so the small end of the spring goes into the valve opening first. Use the driver shaft to direct and align the water inlet seal and spring into the water inlet valve opening. Use your fingers to seat it well. Rub plumber's lube on the o-ring that goes around the water valve cartridge. Put the water valve cartridge through the cartridge retaining ring. Watch for orientation. 
Insert the new water valve cartridge and retaining ring while making sure the interlocking notches on the locking ring and the base align. Push in while rotating the ring until the tab locks into place. Before fixing the leaking waste ball, let's go over the parts that come in the 34120 waste ball seal kit. It comes with an instruction sheet with pictures, a new waste ball seal, and an extra flange seal. First, lift off the old waste ball seal. Then, lift off the waste ball retaining ring. Locate the Phillips head screw inside the waste ball drive arm and use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the screw that connects the drive arm to the waste ball. To remove the waste ball, bend the non-drive side of the waste ball in and lift up. Pull the waste ball out. Locate the waste ball seal on the drive arm side and remove. Put some plumbing lube around the drive arm side of the new waste ball. Insert the new seal and add lube around the outside of the seal. Insert the new waste ball by bending the waste ball, putting the drive side end of the waste ball in first, then the non-drive side. Rotate back and forth until the waste ball and seal are fully seated. Insert the new waste ball drive arm and rotate until the notch of the drive arm falls into the notch of the waste ball. Insert the screw and tighten with a Phillips screwdriver. Move the drive arm and waste ball back and forth to make sure it is moving smoothly and easily. Rub some plumbing grease on the O-ring on the outside of the waste ball seal retaining ring and then insert the retaining ring back into the base. Rub a liberal amount of plumbing grease on the bottom of the ball seal. Place the new waste ball seal on the waste ball seal retaining ring with the flat side down. I also added some plumbing grease to the top of the ball itself. Replacing the handle. Rotate the waste ball arm to the top position and move the water valve drive pin to the lower position. Spring, spring, goes into spring. This goes into here. This goes into here. So we're gonna line it up. Like that. Spring. Let's see the beginning here. And snap it into place. Reattaching the china bowl to the base. Make sure the bottom of the china bowl opening is clean where it will mate with the waste ball seal. Align the four holes in the bowl with the four locking tabs on the base. Then rotate clockwise until the two bolt holes from the base are aligned with the holes in the china bowl. Insert the two bolts that attach the bowl to the base and tighten down with a 3 8 inch ratchet. Make sure you have the washers still on the screws, with the plastic washer being the one that actually touches the china bowl. Make sure you don't over tighten and crack the bowl. Reattach the clear hose to the vacuum breaker and move the spring clip back into position. Reattach the other end of the clear hose to the base and move that spring clip back into position. Remove the old closet flange gasket from the bottom of the base of the toilet. Put the new closet flange seal on the base of the toilet. Now that we've replaced the valve seal and the waste ball seal and reassembled the toilet, we're gonna bring it back into the bathroom and reattach it to the floor and connect the bolts and the water line. Remove the bag blocking the toilet opening in the floor. Make sure the top surface of the closet flange is clean enough to make a really good seal. Reinsert the closet flange T-bolts into the slots of the closet flange. Lift the toilet over the toilet flange and carefully seat the base over the flange, making sure the bolts extend through the holes into the toilet base. Finger tighten the one half inch nuts onto the bolts. Use a one half inch socket and ratchet handle to tighten down the nuts. There will be a gap between the toilet and the floor that will close as the nuts are tightened and the closet flange gasket is compressed. Be careful not to over tighten with the ratchet as you snug both sides down. Check to see if the toilet wobbles. If it does, tighten the nuts until the wobble is gone. Replace the plastic nut caps on each side. Reattach the water supply line to the base of the toilet. 
finger tight. I had to use a wrench to final tighten it because of hand arthritis. These are plastic parts, do not over tighten. Turn the water back on to see if the connection drips. Test the toilet, make sure the water flows correctly when flushing and check to see if the bowl holds water. This is a three minute time lapse showing that the bowl is now holding water. The toilet works great now, but there are some really important things I learned while doing this repair and maintenance project. First, before removing the toilet, I wish I had taken a hose with a powerful nozzle and cleaned out the inside of the base of the toilet. This way it would have washed the buildup down into our black tank. I had to clean the toilet manually with gloves, which was a really nasty job. Put it this way, the toilet was about two pounds lighter after I thoroughly cleaned it for the video. That's about a pound a year of full-time RV living. Also, make sure you have lots of strong cleaners handy along with something to sterilize everything after you are done. Instead of using our nice toilet bowl brush, I wish I had bought a cheap one that I could have thrown away afterwards. Make sure you have a separate trash bag nearby to toss out all the old parts, smelly rags, and paper towels. Since the water in the RV will be shut off and you won't be able to wash your hands in the sink, make sure you can wash them at the spigot. Have hand soap and paper towels handy. Now I ordered the 34120 waste ball seal kit which was made and sold by we hope on amazon and cost 16 dollars if i had to do it over again i would have ordered the 34117 waste ball replacement kit which includes the seal and a new waste ball this would have saved me cleaning our nasty waste ball this kit only cost 10 dollars more at 26 dollars and is also sold by we hope on amazon our old waste ball did have some scratches in it and it may cause our waste ball seal to fail sooner. One way to completely avoid replacing the individual parts and cleaning is to replace the entire base. An entire tall base like we have would have only cost $80 versus the $40 to $50 you will pay for replacement parts alone. This kit is the base alone. You reuse the China Bowl. Is your RV toilet acting up? Do you have a Thetford Aquamagic 2 toilet and had to do this repair? Please share your experience in the comments section below. If you have any specific questions about this project, please also leave them in the comments section. We do lots of detailed RV DIY projects like this along with campground tours, product reviews, and of course, full-time RV living. If you like that kind of stuff, please consider subscribing by clicking this link below. I will also leave a link right over here for more helpful RV how-to videos and remember downsizing does make sense.